So I'm here in LA and I'm having fun on these scooters. Everywhere you go, there's scooters on every corner and they actually come in really useful. You just open up the app, turn on the scooter, hop on it, ride it for a mile or two and then get off. The shoot's going really good. I'm having a lot of fun. It's really cool. It's on a soundstage. So I'm getting to see all the inner workings of all these different processes of making a TV show. So it's it's big, big influence, big inspiration to me. <laughs> Who are you talking to? Who, me? Yeah. So I just got a Mitch and Murray columns for a video shoot. Just big straight up and down. Nice. How'd you do today? For uh, it being 800 degrees, I did pretty good. You did? You sold a few? Yeah, I sold a couple things. Sold a couple cameras. Oh, you did? So those uh, cameras usually have a bit of a value. What about on the way home? Can you get meat or is it gonna be uh, peanut butter and jealous? I'm not Jimmy. That's where it's at now. But I'm happy. <laughs> spend a lot of time with my brother John. He makes deliveries most often in the evening, so occasionally I take a ride with him, and we always have a laugh. You know what I mean? Where are we? What are we doing? They're ugly. Kind of the edge of Culver City, the Adams District. The Adams District is the original Hollywood. It's where Fatty Arbuckle lived. He was the king, and we're delivering a mud kitchen that you might have saw in the workshop the other day. We're on a dead end street. We're on we're a dead end street. We're in the right spot? Yeah, they're right here. It really came out nice. Yeah, we put some hooks here underneath. Looks good. Now, maybe we should get it to the light. Okay. So when I say we're here. Ta-da. Yeah, we've got to do the ta-da. She liked it. Yeah, she looked very happy. Yeah? What's the anxiety of like them not liking it? Do you, I have that anxiety. The color that they wanted was a tiny bit different. So you know how people give you, you know, squash. magenta squash, <laughs> and, they, and you just go to your local hardware store and they remake magenta squash. Right. They remade it and it was a tiny bit off. That blue. That color was a tiny bit off from it what they like wanted. The color of that. Right. A little bit off. I'm gonna go. Well, it's gonna go outdoors. And I spoke to my paint salesman. And he said that since it's going to go outdoors, it'll probably fade a little and it's going to land right at the magenta squash that you were looking for. Or oh, worse comes to worst, I send back my son with the real magenta squash. He paints it in their backyard. I pay him. Thank you. So the other day when I was over at John's house, Matt came out of his room and gave me this old portfolio. I knew I left it here, he told me about it, and it's been here for many, many years. And let's go through it and I'll show you what's inside. All right, this is a portfolio, one of many. I used to keep a lot of different portfolios and I don't remember exactly why I made this one, but it was here in California. My brother had it at his house. Now if you notice, this is before the iPhone. This is from probably about 15 years ago. and. I would buy these books. I guess I would get these at like Staples. Oh, this postcard's falling out. I did this key over 20 years ago. This is one of the first keys I made. I made a postcard of it. That's just an actual scan of the key. I didn't even photograph it. I would make these portfolios all the time and I would always make a, a sleeve for them to go in. Because when I would meet with somebody, I wanted them to seem a little impressed with the presentation. To me that was very important. Now we show everything on the iPhone, so times have changed quite a bit. 
And like I said, this is just one of many different portfolios that I would always keep. I worked for a company that had a photocopier, so I would always make color photocopies of things to leave behind. And you can see on here a lot of my guitars at the time, accordion I made. This has a lot of different work from very different eras. But this, a lot of this work for me was from the 90s. I made this dentist chair, or dental chair, in 98, 99. I made this in the 80s, I made this in the 90s. There's the gurgling guts. My sister and I had a store for a little while, which is no longer there. That's her jewelry and my sculpture. This is the famous armchair that I made on one of the two TV shows. And this is the very first one I made in the spring of 1999. And here you see pictures up close of me making it sculpting it. My old lathe making the legs. I'm sorry I don't have digital images of any of these. It's a little shelf that I made. I might have put this portfolio together to try and maybe get a job on TV for something. That's why this was here at my brother's house. This is an upside down man you sit on his butt. This is a picture frame I made. It's been in a lot of different portfolios. Here you can see me carving it. This was some of the imagery from inside the store my sister and I had. I made all these picture frames with mirrors that people would buy. Plunger man. Some of the lamps that we sold in the store, all handmade by me. This is in the 90s. This is a credenza that I had, that I made, and you can see some of the process shots that I made. It was a closet for my clothes and a drawer at the bottom. And when I moved out of this apartment, I had nowhere to put it. I had to leave it on the street. For a while, I was making all these objects and casting them in resin. That was my face with two light bulbs for eyes. These little figures that held candles. I was doing all this resin cast stuff at the time. There's me casting my arm. And the arm holds a clock. I made a big silicone mold and we would cast them in resin. I never really sold a lot of these. There's the plunger man I carved in wood. We casted him. Here's a crazy frame I made with my hands. There's me molding my hands. There was a moment in 99 where I was experimenting with a whole bunch of different stuff. There's a bunch of wood I found on the street. I cut it up and I made this table out of it on the lathe. I spun it on the lathe. These are some of the guitars I carved in the 90s. I used to make guitars all the time, but I don't do it anymore. I really do need to get back into carving more. I made this guitar for Steve Vai. You could look him up, not too many people know who he is anymore. I used to do a lot more woodwork when I was a kid. You could see this. Again, I'm sorry, these are just printed pictures and I'm showing them to you through a vinyl cover, but this is one of the first like kind of elaborate things I carved when I was in art school, like as freshman in art school, I made that. This is just some of the abstract stuff I made on my own. I never stopped working as a kid. I always made all kinds of weird shit. This I made 
for no reason. It was at my mother's house. It rotted away. This is me making this big clothespin. It's a sign I carved for somebody's house in upstate New York years ago. I don't even remember who or why. At school, we made this Yugo exhibition. And this one was mine. It was Everybody got a Yugo and we turned them into crazy things. I made mine into an accordion. The concept of the show is if you got a useless car, what else could it be? Just the Yugos or a useless car, which is something nobody remembers anymore. Here's some of my process shots of the Yugo. These are all from a portfolio which I lost. I don't know where it is. They're color copies of spreads from that ex portfolio. This is a magazine piece I was in. They talked about my clock that I made when I was a student. I made this walking stick for somebody. It's all hand carved. He worked at the Muppets and he developed a limp. So his wife hired me to make this cane for him. A little oversized, but it had all the Muppets hand carved into the stick. And these are the keys at the time was so unique. This is 20 years old. It's a big bar I made for somebody. It's, it's kind of like a retail desk. Gurgling guts. Here you can see the upside down man. He was sculpted out of beams I found in New York in the garbage. I sold them at an art gallery many years ago. 2000 I made him, 19 years ago. Some picture frames. I don't know what this portfolio was exactly for. There's a little side table I made, which I think I ended up giving away to somebody. Recently in New York, I found a bunch of portfolios very similar to this, so I'll go over those when I go back to New York. Each one is a different moment in time, categorizing whatever it was I was trying to sell to whoever I had a meeting with. <laughs> Thank you for joining me. I'll see you in a couple days. No. He wants to jump right in. That's high water, all right? Uh, that's a lot of melting ice. That's a lot of water right now. It's starting to flow. Remember when we built the thing, there was no water that day? Everybody's like, yeah. why don't you just walk across? Yeah, right. <laughs> <laughs> and the water was high. But you can tell the water was high.